Welcome back to the Center Car Care YouTube channel. Today we're going to be cleaning a vinyl convertible top with a traditional glass window. So let's jump in right into it. So the first step, regardless of what kind of convertible top you have, you're going to want to rinse that off really good. What we want to do is get this nice and saturated to try and bring up any of those dry soils to the surface. And it's also going to add a little bit of lubricity so that we're not taking any of those dry soils and just scratching them against the top of the top. So let's just rinse this off with a hose. Get a nice and saturated. You can use a pressure washer for this step. But if you're going to do it, make sure you keep the pressure washer a safe distance away from the material. We're pretty safe on a vinyl one like this, but if you have a fabric one, it can really create some lines with a pressure washer. So whatever you're doing to get the water on there, make sure it's low pressure and just get it nice and saturated. All right, now that we got the top nice and wet, we're going to use a nice high lubricity soap like Stoner's Orange Creamsicle Moab. So we're just going to cover this with a foam cannon and we'll get down to scrubbing it. All right, now we're gonna let this marinate for about a minute or two just to let the soils work their way up into the foam. And then we're gonna agitate it with some soft bristle brushes here. So when you're doing this, you wanna use like a soft to medium bristle brush, something similar that you would use on like the interior because these are really prone to being scratched and once you scratch them, they're really not cheap to replace them. So we're gonna use this nice soft big body brush here and then we have a smaller one for getting in the crevices. No real magic to it, I just like to do straight lines. You don't need a ton of agitation when you're doing this. You're really just trying to re-expose the surfaces, make sure all of it's exposed to, this, to uh, the Moab to make sure it can pull that up into the surface of the foam. That way we can wash it away safely. I really like to have a body brush that has a nice long handle like this because when you're reaching across to get the middle parts, I'm not scraping up against the wet car on the side here. So just little things that make your life a little bit easier when you're doing it. Maybe consider that when you're looking at your next brush. And then when you get into some of these crevices here, I'm gonna get a little bit of this foam on that brush here. And then if you need to get into those crevices, you can kind of go around each side with a smaller brush to get into the details. It's where a lot of dirt likes to sit into these cracks. As we're sitting here, one of the gentlemen here said, why aren't you using just like a washman to do this? And it's actually a good point. You could use a washman if you want to do it. It would do a great job. But then when we have into some of these tighter cracks, these uh, larger fingers on these Chanel washmits have a little bit tougher time getting down into those tighter grooves. So that's where it really helps to have a brush to get into the details. But for doing the larger surfaces like this, this will absolutely do the job for you. All right, now that we've got the Moab applied, we've agitated, it's been exposed to all the different surfaces. Really all the cleaning of it has been done by now. So now we're just gonna be rinsing it with the hose. Again, you could do this process with a pressure washer, but if you're gonna use that, you wanna keep that pressure washer away from the car. So you're not taking any chances of creating any lines in these tops. So all I'm doing here is just rinsing off this Moab. The nice part about Moab, it has high lubricity, so we're not having any risk of scratching this top. And it's also pulling the soils up into the surface of the foam, so that way we can easily wash away the foam and takes the dirt with it. All right, now that we have this all washed up and the vinyl is perfectly clean, all that's left to do is dry it. At this stage, if you wanted to add a protectant, you could do that. But this is a garage cap vehicle, and we're really not too worried about that. So what we're gonna do is just try and have as least touching it as possible. So what I like to do on these kind of wraps or these uh, tops, I'll lay it down and I just give it a couple pats. Now on a vinyl top, it's kind of overkill. You really, you, you would have to be doing something heavy to scratch it at this point on these vinyls. But if you do have like a fabric top, like you picture like a rag top on a Jeep Wrangler, they can scratch just by too much abrasion. So keep in mind, if you want to be extra careful, padding and blotting drying is going to be a little bit safer than dragging a towel across it. Now, if you want to be even safer about it, you could go totally touchless. You have a big fan or even like one of those leaf blowers that you can use. I wouldn't maybe use like a gas one. You stick with the electric one so you're not blowing any kind of fumes on, out onto the vehicle. But you can use whatever means necessary to get this dry, but just try and touch as least as you can. All right, so that's all there is to it for cleaning a vinyl top. If you have a fabric top and you'd like to see one of those and how that's cleaned, it's a little bit different process. Comment down below. And if you happen to live in Lancaster, Pennsylvania and you have a rag top and you'd like us to clean it for you, we're looking to do it on a video. So let, reach out to us. That's all there is to it. So give us a like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.